significantly. Why is technological breakthrough slowed? I mean, if you think of the technological breakthroughs at the turn of the century, you think of the Wright brothers, Thomas, Jeff, uh, Thomas Edison, so going to electricity, going to oil, going to the internal combustion engine, automobiles, airplanes. I mean, these are massive, massive, life-changing, world-shattering changes to everything. Now, it's true, we have had a computer revolution, and indeed, almost all the productivity gains over the last 40 years are the consequences of computers, of the integration of computers into business, the replacement of employees with machines, with algorithms, with robots, with everything. So whatever productivity gain we have seen, it's come from this one industry. But we're not seeing much innovation elsewhere. We're still using fossil fuels. Now, they're, they're damn good, but what happened to, the, to, to nuclear? What happened to flying cars? What happened to mining asteroids? What happened to the massive potential that exists out there in the, in, the, in the space of big physical products to improve dramatically beyond just the computing power? Well, again, one has to ask the question, what makes innovation possible? What makes progress possible? And here one has to rely on, on Ayn Rand and, and Austrian economists. What makes innovation possible is the human mind. It's people thinking. It's people exploring. It's people experimenting. It's people trying and failing 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 and, failing and, failing and then succeeding. Ask Thomas Edison. Ask the Wright brothers. What progress, technological progress, innovation requires is an entrepreneurial mentality, an individualist holds, you know, uh, 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 pushing ahead, taking risks, failing, experimenting, trying, getting up on your feet, going ahead again, trying again, failing. It requires experimentation. It requires the human mind to be free, to think, to innovate, to progress, and it requires the freedom to apply those thoughts in reality. In reality. That is, it requires the freedom, the freedom to build businesses, to fail at businesses, to experiment, to try new things. And the fact is that other than in the Silicon Valley world, and that world is going away in my view, but other than in the technological world, we have no, none of that freedom anymore. I mean, I was just reading that the European Union wants to regulate the, the power connector for phones and devices. They want to make sure that all devices have the, the same connectivity so that you, the consumer, will only have to buy one cable for all your devices. Isn't that wonderful? And they're upset because Apple uses one type of cable and everybody else uses a different type of cable. So they want standardization of cables. I mean, this is how you destroy innovation. You start regulating the minutia. You start regulating every aspect of a business. You tell people when they, what businesses they can start, what they can't start, what things they can experiment in, what they can't. They have to wear goggles, otherwise they, you could go to jail, I guess, or get fined. Imagine if you told Thomas Edison he had to wear goggles and he had to have sprinklers and he had to invest millions of dollars in safety. He would have never done what he did. Or the Wright brothers. Oh, no, no, that's too risky, guys. We live in a culture where the government stifles risk-taking. It stifles innovation. It stifles 
experimentation. The FDA makes it almost impossible to bring a new drug to market. The innovation in healthcare that would be allowed if you privatized the FDA and you had private, private institutions who regulated for the private sector drugs is unimaginable as compared to what we have today. Now, of course, one of the funny things about the European Union is they're going to regulate which cable you stick in the thing, just as Apple is announcing, we're not going to have any cable, everything is going to go wireless, right? Everything is going to go uh, wireless charging. But, th but that's, regulation would stifle that. They'd say, wait a minute, it has to have a cable. You, you can't produce products without, without the ability to charge with a cable. What about all the cables you're on bought and, and, and has? You, know, it's, you can't not offer that option. That's what we're getting to. So it is the regulatory agency. It's the regulatory mentality that is stifling economic growth, that is stifling a lack of productivity, that is stifling entrepreneurship. And it's true that we lack an investment in research and development and education. But that's because government has crowded out private investment from these fields. We have no massive investment in education because the government controls education. And our educational system sucks is the technical term. In order to produce entrepreneurs, we have to have people who can think. Not just think by the book, not just think, but think creatively. Think outside of the box. Think independently. And for that, you would need a vastly different educational system than what we have today which is about what learning, if it's about learning at all, when it's not about socializing. But even Europe's better educational system, I don't know, Finland or whatever, are not producing thinkers, not producing innovators, not producing producers, not producing risk takers. Indeed, we've taken risk out of life. Risk is dangerous. <laughs> we don't want people to take risk. And we teach them not to take risk. As parents, we do the same thing. We discourage risk taking. So we have a culture of people who should be the innovators, who are afraid to take risk, afraid to fail. I mean, the US is better than Japan in this, better than Europe in this. In, in the US, it's still acceptable to fail. In these other countries, it's not. The, the, the dream job of a Frenchman is a government job and as a civil servant with a lifetime income and a lifetime pension and everything. That is an ideal. But that's what needs to be chucked. We need to encourage risk taking. We don't want a stronger social insurance network. You want people to feel like they are responsible for their own lives. They're responsible for bringing in the money that, that, that we live in a world that is not structured to to, 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 to protect you. But one that is structured to allow you to benefit from freedom. Allows you, leaves you alone to produce, to create, to build, to make. Free of mother government, paternalistic government sitting on your shoulder telling you what you can and cannot do. What you can and cannot produce. How much you can and cannot play your, pay your employees. You want increasing productivity, what you need is more freedom. Freedom in the school system by privatizing it, allowing for real competition and innovation in schools. Freedom in science and research and development by taking the government out of science funding so that entrepreneurs and individuals and corporations and businesses start investing in science, but in science that can be turned into technology, science that can be turned into increasing productivity. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. 
any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...